We all know about people who sit around and complain. They see a problem and they wish someone would do something about it. Uh, those people don't end up on the show. Our next guest saw a problem affecting children and guess what? He did something about it. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. This is the show where we talk about issues that matter to Americans. My guest today is Mr. Ron Anderson. He's a young man, or maybe he's not that young, but he's young enough, uh, who saw a problem and he did something about it. He's the founder of Project Reclaim. Well, thank you for having me, Dr. Swain. It's a privilege to be on your program and to share that what we're attempting to do to reclaim the whole promise and full potential of youth and families here in Northwest Louisiana. Okay, well, uh, Ron, tell us a little bit about you. So were you born in Louisiana? I was, yes. And uh, I happened to grow up in a circumstance as a teenager where the prediction for me was that I would end up in Angola State Penitentiary or be dead in the streets. Oh, my. And, That's bad. <laughs> well, it was. And I grew up amongst uh, violence, amongst addiction issues in the family, uh, grinding, abject poverty, uh, one meal a day at school, no electricity, no school clothes, uh, sleeping in, in my clothes at night in order not to flee, freeze in my slumber. And I thought that prediction was going to manifest itself. I thought it would come true. But the reason that I'm here on your show, Dr. Swain, speaking with you, is because there were individuals that saw things in me that I was blind to. They saw possibilities while other people saw liabilities. Right. And I like to think that that is the genesis for why I do what I do in the community to help others. Okay. All right. So um, that's a mouthful. Uh, and you've been to college, so you defied the odds. Yeah. You came out of a bad situation. You didn't get shot and killed as a teenager. I'm pretty sure of that because you're here talking with me. So what was the turning point? You know, who stepped into your life as a young man that is responsible for steering you in a direction? And I know usually it's not just one person. We have many people that uh, cross our paths. So what do we want to hear about now is just the turning point, your turning point. The turning point for me was uh, acting out in school, being violent, um, utilizing my anger, my pain, and taking it out on others, and hurting a boy at school very grievously, and being told that I would be expelled from every school in Webster Parish. You know, in Louisiana, we don't have counties, we have parishes. So here I am uh, on the verge of being not being allowed to go to school anywhere in a parish. The principal told me, you know, I'm tired of you. And I decided at that time I needed some help. So that Monday morning, I went to see uh, our school counselor. Her name was Mrs. June C. Turner. And she literally changed my life. She went to a, a file cabinet and she pulled all out a manila folder. And as she was listening to me, she showed me something, Dr. Swain. She said, your grades were fine until right here. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. That was a turning point for me because when you're living in so many situations of detriment, the only common denominator is you. You think there's something wrong with you. She was able to illustrate to me and to demonstrate to me that it wasn't me, it was what was going on around me. And she said in no uncertain terms, she said, you're not a bad child, you're an angry child. And she convinced me that what I needed to do was to educate myself was to start following the rules, was to live up to my full potential. And I give her a lot of the credit of God working through her to have me on your show today. And so Ron, you're telling me that one counselor, one conversation, one manila folder, one file cabinet changed your life. Yes, definitely. And as you mentioned, Dr. Swain, there were other people that didn't look down on me because of where I, I was from. Some did that didn't look down on me because of the situation that I was in. But that was a turning point for me because it was literally a moment in my life where I understood that it wasn't me. It was what right. was going on around me. And so I say that she's a catalyst. And I feel that I owe a debt and I'm paying that debt by working with other youth that grow up in situations similar to my own. 
Now, Ron, did you have any siblings as you were growing up? Well, my siblings were removed from the home. And uh, my, my stepfather's mother took in one sister and a friend of the family took the other one. But as you look at adoption cases and what have you, a lot of times people don't want the boys. So I was kind of left there to deal with all the situations that were going on. And I had to fend myself. There was a time when I would sleep on the playground at Jones Elementary School in Menden on the merry-go-round and the stars were my blanket because it was too hellish to go home. And so I was kind of left to those devices. But I'm thankful for people that saw things in me, as I mentioned, that I was blind to. That's why I'm here with you today. And how did you end up in college? I mean, um, so, you, so you got it together, you started making better grades, and was it the same counselor that steered you to college or did other people step in there? Well, uh, I went and joined the military and I found that I wasn't ready. I was still too rebellious, but thank God I was able to get an honorable discharge. And then I got a job working in a wood yard that I hated. And one day I was thinking, you know, when I was in school, it was just a choice for me to make good grades. So why don't I try this college thing? So I went in and I enrolled in Southern University in Shreveport and I spent one year there. And then I transferred to Louisiana Tech University in Ruston and spent three years there. And then I walked across the stage and I had a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology in my hand. And now Southern University is a historically uh, black college, right? That's, That's correct, started. Yes. And when you yes. transferred, did you transfer to another black college or? No, I transferred to Louisiana Tech University. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that is uh, an impressive uh, story. And during your college years, did they have a separate track for minority students? Did Black students get separate tests from white students? Uh, no, not at that time. At that time, I was totally immersed in my studies in psychology with everyone else. But I, I need to point this out to you, Dr. Swain. I remember once going into a dorm room and I commuted. I was married at the time when I was in college and I commuted. Uh, it's about 50 miles. And I went into a dorm room waiting on our bus that would bring us back to Webster Parish. And a young man told me years later that when I walked in the room, he was thinking, what is this thug doing in here? You know, what is this goon doing in here? And uh -huh. he said, what impressed him was this, that while everybody else, they had their drinks and they were laughing and talking and playing cards, I pulled out a book and went and sat in the corner and started reading. Oh. And that stunned him because he saw me as the old me. He didn't see me as the scholarly driven, uh, goal directed individual. So that was kind of the perception of Ron Anderson at that time that I would never become anything. Right. But I'm glad I was able to dispel that. So he was stereotyping you, but here's, her, here's my point. I was kind of joking. So this was tongue in cheek. Nowadays uh, with critical race theory, they make the argument that standards have to be lowered for minorities. They need to be in their own sections, that math is racist, that um, Blacks don't need to learn standard English, or maybe they don't believe that they can learn standard English. Uh, when you went to college, which, which years were you there? When were you there? I was there from 1978 to 1981. Okay, now during the time you were in college, did anyone uh, tell you that as a Black student, you didn't need to learn math or that you need a separate test or that you should take your classes with just other Black students? No, not at all. Not at all. And I have to point this out, Dr. Swain, when I was going through what I was going through as a teenager in the small town of Menden, about 15,000 people at that time, and it's a small town, everybody knew what I was dealing with, but none of those educators cut corners for me. Right. They didn't lower the bar for me. And had they done that, I would have resented that. I would have resented it. They held me at the same standard that they held everyone else. And I'm so appreciative to the fact that they did that. Well, Ron, I can tell you that that's my experience and that's the experiences of other Blacks of, of the generation prior to this one. And so I find it infuriating, the argument uh, about Black uh, inferiority in a way. Because exactly. They, yeah, they're saying that standards have to be lowered and the kids, the Black kids today, they've never had it better than they have it right now. Um, and so it's, it's ludicrous. We're going to take a break. And when we return, I want you to tell our audience uh, more about how you, how, how was it that you started this program and what you're doing with the young people? We'll be back in a moment.
Conversations with Dr. Carol Swain is made possible by Cooper Steel, a family-owned business that provides the steel fabrications for some of the greatest buildings across the United States. 60 years ago, Kenneth and Faye Cooper founded their company in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Cooper Steel believes in sponsoring Carol Swain because we believe she does. You build strong, you stand strong. What started as a vision and now a nationally recognized and operated company that remains true to its founders' Judeo-Christian values and principles. Cooper Steel is committed to excellence, responsibility, and community. Cooper Steel's motto is, build strong, stand strong. They treat their employees and customers like family. Thank you to Cooper Steel for standing strong with conversations with Dr. Carol Swain. Learn more about our generous sponsor at coopersteel.com. Black Eye for America is enlightening the nation. I would definitely encourage people to buy the book to learn a little bit more about what critical race theory is actually rooted in, Marxism. Buy the book at bethepeoplenews.com or wherever books are sold. Just so we can have logical and practical conversations with people who are getting misinformation and disinformation from social media, from their friends. Now an Amazon bestseller and available on Kindle. Absolutely, it's a must read book. I'm back with my guests and we're talking about Project uh, Reclaim and also Ron's fascinating uh, story. And so uh, how is it that we get to, you get to college, you graduate after coming from such dire circumstances, uh, fast forward and walk us to the point that you had this program that you're promoting. Well, ever since I graduated from college, I've always been involved in service. I worked with individuals that, with developmental disabilities, and then I, I, I taught for a while, and I was always called uh, to serve. I was always called to work with others. And um, I was invited once to do some leadership training for some parish students in an area parish. And I noticed that all day long, when kids rotated in and out of my session and they went to other in instructor sessions to get leadership training, none of the individuals that I work with came through. They tended to be the A and B students, the star athletes, you know, kids that were going to make it anyway. So I had the idea that we need to have leadership training for the kids that don't ever get selected for leadership training. They need to have the opportunity to learn to be positive and effective leaders in their home schools and communities as well. So we started Project Reclaim. It started as working with all boys. We rented out the Menden Civic Center one Saturday morning. And Dr. Swain, when we got there at seven o'clock in the morning, a lot of people had said, these boys will not get up at seven o'clock in the morning to come and eat breakfast and to come through leadership training. It was standing room only. Kids were riding on their bicycles. They were walking. Parents were dropping them off. There were girls outside clamoring to get in. We had to open the doors. So I said, there's a need for this. There's a call for this. So I began it. Uh, with a state grant, and we used an after-school program where we did academic support and leadership training. We involved parents in parental involvement and parent training activities, and it has since morphed into a full-fledged program with our own facility that was recently donated to us, okay. 5,300 square feet, where we can schedule as we will, and we've got kids that are usually not selected for leadership training that are learning to be good leaders. They're learning okay. social skills, and they're getting at academic support. And so Ron, sort of break down the program, like if I'm a young person, which ages do you start with? And then what's the first thing you teach them when they walk through the doors? We start from third grade. And Dr. Swain, what we endeavor to do is we don't enroll kids one year and then the next year look to enroll a group of kids. We mm -hmm. like to do what I call grow them we grow them through the program. And as they matriculate into high school, technically they've completed the program, but we don't tell them that because if they wanna continue coming, they will. And when someone first comes into our program, we have an Ascend math program that was donated to us and we get their basal levels in mathematics because students in Louisiana tend to fare poorly in math. Hey, so wait get... a minute, Ron. Yes. I have to stop you. Uh, didn't you know that math is racist? <laughs> and, th and there's no right and wrong answers and that it's racist to expect uh, black kids to 
learn math? Uh, I did not know that. And I would uh, dispel that in a heartbeat. Now, I run into kids that say they don't like math. But my point to them is this. Well, do you like money? And they're right. like, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> money is math. So. That's right. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Bill Gates, his foundation funded a, a study. And, and there are parts of the country where they are adopting, you know, this program and teaching pretty much that uh, math is racist. Uh, I, I don't get that contention. It's part that, of critical race theory, our well, enemy. I, <laughs> well, I think what we need to do is this. I think that we need to hold our kids to a high standard in every area of academia that they're involved in, because believe it or not, they can attain and they can achieve. I am living proof of that. When I entered into college, I scored exceptionally high in English, and they put me in honors English classes. Now, mind you, here's a kid from the projects. Here's a kid with no electricity, one meal a day at school, no father at the head of the table, no car in the driveway. But now I'm sitting in an honors English class in the collegiate level. And no one said to me, you're not good enough. And right. had they said that, I would have resented it. And I would dare not treat any young person that comes into our program as not being good enough. We hold them to a high standard and they respond to it. Now, Ron, uh, another issue that comes up often involving minority students is, and this is, again, a critical race theory. It says that sitting uh, quietly in your chair, planning for the future, getting in places on time, that's whiteness. Uh, are you teaching whiteness in your program? We're teaching survival. <laughs> you know, if, if you, you're going to have a job, you have to get there Business time to me, Dr. Swain, is what you schedule this interview. It's you log in 15 minutes <laughs> early. And I don't see color in that. What I see is professionalism. What I see is if you're wanting to be a provider for your family, you need to be responsible. And I think if you lower the bar in such a fashion, then isn't that in itself racist? Well, I mean, I think it is. And I think that what they're doing now with critical race theory that to the extent that they uh, indoctrinate our young people with those messages, they doom them to failure. And so your program seems to be counteracting that negative message, message. And I would imagine that if your school, the schools these kids are coming from are like other schools around the country, they are learning critical race theory and they are being told that they're victims and that uh, racism is permanent and that they are at a permanent disadvantage. And I believe that if you are, uh, if, you, if those ideas, you internalize those ideas, you're going to be uh, prone to fail because it doesn't motivate you to work hard. Well, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes. And I don't think we, we equip our kids. And I know that in Project Reclaim, we don't equip our kids in such a fashion. Case in point, when I'm in Walmart here in Minden, and we do have a Walmart, even though we're very small, and a young lady comes up to me in a military uniform and she's an officer and she says, thank you. And she came through our program. A young man just finished our program who's absolutely brilliant. And the reason he was referred by the principal is to help him with his social skills. He went to the prestigious Louisiana uh, School for Mathematics, Science and the Arts in, in Natchitoches, which is a very high performing school. And now he's enrolled at Occidental College in Southern California, and he aspires to be an astrophysicist. How dare someone tell a child what they can't do? Our whole emphasis is you can do this. My kids will tell you, Mr. Anderson doesn't, it doesn't take excuses well. You know, if you come to me and you've got an issue, well, I probably had that same issue or worse, and I do understand, but we're going to do our work. We're going to treat people right. We're going to learn these leadership concepts. We're going to be the best we can with this gift of life that God has given us. And Ron, remind our viewers and me too, uh, when exactly did you start this program? How many years has it been in, it, in existence? We started it back in 2008. Oh, it's and, been uh, around for a while. It has. And we've served hundreds and hundreds of youth and families. And I, I'm fond to say that we don't enroll youth, we enroll families. Right. Because you have to impact that household dynamic. So we get the parents involved in what we're doing. We provide some parental uh, education uh, uh, services to them. We provide referral services. If there's something that parents and families need that they, we don't provide, then we refer them to other services that can help them. And one of the best calls that you can ever get is a parent to call to say, I just want to thank you. 
I want to thank you for how well my child is doing. That's how I get paid. Well, Ron, when we return from this break, I want you to uh, talk more about the program and how we can help you. Because uh, I'm curious about how much it costs to send one child through the program. So we're going to have a word from my sponsor. And when we return, uh, we want you to fill in those missing gaps about how we can help your program. Be happy to. Dr. Carol Swain's Be the People, a call to reclaim America's faith and promise, newly released in paperback and audio with a new introduction, is a challenge to all Americans. If you are serious about being the best citizen you can be, this is the book for you. From addressing moral relativism to reclaiming the future, you'll understand why Dr. Swain is one of the most relevant voices in today's culture war. Are you ready to reclaim America's faith and promise? Purchase at bethepeoplenews.com front slash books or wherever books are sold. Cooper Steel is a family-owned business that provides the steel fabrications for some of the greatest buildings across the United States. 60 years ago, Kenneth and Faye Cooper founded their company in Shelbyville, Tennessee. What started as a vision and now a nationally recognized and operated company that remains true to its founders' Judeo-Christian values and principles. Cooper Steel's motto is, build strong, stand strong. Thank you to Cooper Steel for standing strong with conversations with Dr. Carol Swain. I'm back with Ron Anderson. And Ron, how much does it cost to send a child through Project Reclaim? In the state of Louisiana, I did a little research to put a teenager in a juvenile secure facility costs about $424 a day, $154,760 per year. We can work with one youth in Project Reclaim for $2.79 a day. And if we serve one other person in that youth's family, we serve that family for about $1.38 per day. When I look at that math, two things occur to me. Number one, I'm a fiscal conservative. I can show you how best to use your resources and give you a result that's more socially redeeming at the end. A okay, young person- Ron. Yes. Just do the math. Like if, if there's someone out there that would like to contribute to your program, uh, how much would they have to contribute to be able to, you know, to support one child or uh, half of that child's uh, tuition? Well, one child participation in the program is about one thousand and three dollars for one year. And generally we serve about 60 youth and families per year. That is so affordable. That and let me ask you this. Can you adopt a child? Like, do you have this uh, thing where um, you uh, a person, a family, or someone that wanted to support your program could select a child or select a family to support? Oh, most definitely. Now, we hadn't done anything formally in that regard, but I'll have individuals that do contribute to our program to say that, you know, determine a need for a family and let me know what that is. And then they are, they contribute to help that family. And uh, another question I have, uh, uh, Ron, is are there similar programs across the country like Project Reclaim? And if there isn't, do you have any aspirations of, you know, setting up little franchises or taking your program beyond Louisiana? I'd be definitely interested in doing that. I'm not aware of any programs that uh, specifically have the, the, the kind of focus that we have of leadership training for the kids that we target from single parent homes, impoverished circumstances, uh, free and reduced lunch, high crime neighborhoods. I'm sure there are, but I would love to be able to replicate our model because we've had a great deal of success doing it here in the city of Menden. That is wonderful. And, uh, and the children, once they progress through the program, they get to the very end, does graduation occur when they graduate from high school or at what point are they recognized or do they progress through grade levels and they're recognized at different points along the way? Oh, they're recognized at different points um, along the way. With the facility that we has been donated to us by McInnes Brothers Construction, we've uh, erected a wall of honor 
And we have the pictures of former participants, one who's playing football at Ole Miss uh, University, another who, as I mentioned, has gone off to Occidental College, another a young lady that finished who had always aspired to be a police officer. And I was in Bossier City to the west of us going into a, a Bossier court to do a life skills class and a police SUV pulls up blocking my path. And I'm wondering what's going on here. And then the window rolls down and the young lady in the, in the driver's seat says, remember me? And it's that young lady as a teenager that always said she wanted to be a police officer. Oh, that and is so sweet. So there are always occasions like that, Dr. Swain, where you're reminded that you may not see the growth at that time, but later on, it's kind of like you plant seeds and then they go off and grow somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But we try to honor our kids every step of the way. And I'm proud to report to you that we've got that wall of honor set up and it's not full yet because we want to give our kids an opportunity to be placed on it. And I walked out of my office and I see two little boys standing there and they're looking at those pictures. And I'm thinking, <laughs> that's what this is about. Right. And I said, one day your names or your pictures are going to be up there and they're nodding their heads. And that's what it's all uh -huh. about. Well, in the time that we have remaining, why don't you tell uh, the viewers uh, just how they can contact you and how they can, you know, uh, support your program directly? Okay, well, our website is www.prstars.org. My uh, email is info, I-N-F-O, at ronanderson llc.com and they can reach out to me that way and we would love to be able to expand our service and, and to re replicate our services in other areas because we've just been met with a great deal of success here well one of the things that i know that we can do is um uh, we, we we will share the show you know widely but uh we will also um you know make sure that the people that I interact with and and the people I encounter along the way that they know more about you and the great work that you're doing in Louisiana. That would be very much appreciated, Dr. Swain. And we also look forward to, um, uh, you know, just more programs like yours that's positive because we have to combat critical race theory. And before you leave, I want to ask you, is critical race theory something that you've thought much about or are you so busy doing your program that it's not been to the, at the forefront? To be honest with you, I'm so immersed in honing what we do. I, I always tell the people that work with me, my coworkers, I, I can be pleased but never satisfied. Uh huh. Uh, I think if you ever become just satisfied, then you're, you're, you're doing a disservice to those that you serve. So I'm so immersed in what I'm doing. I, I don't want to get in political ramifications. Wait, well, wait a minute, Ron. I'm going to send you a copy of my new book, Black Eye for America, How Critical Race Theory is Burning Down the House, because it is uh, your children. If they're coming from public schools or even private schools, you are uh, having to deal with things that they have been indoctrinated with. And so I'm really urging, you know, parents uh, to really learn what critical race theory is, because I think it's very harmful to black children. So I'm going to send you a book and it's very short. Uh, uh, it's um, less than um, 200 pages. Okay. And so then there's going to be a quiz and we're going to have you back on the show or I'm going to call you or contact you. And so you're going to be quizzed on that. So okay. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show and uh, look forward to um, following your incredible work. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be back uh, in a moment. Many ask, why should I care about critical race theory? I'm Dr. Carol Swain, and along with Dr. Christopher Shore, we've authored a new book, Black Eye for America, how critical race theory is burning down the house. Every American should care about CRT because this radical Marxist philosophy is dividing our country and taught to our children. But we're going to stop it. Endorsed by Dr. Ben Carson, Black Eye for America is a playbook on combating CRT. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Conversations. Wasn't uh, Ron Anderson uh, awesome with his story as well as his program, Project Reclaim? 
And so I would urge you all to go to his website uh, that we have up, go to the website, uh, click around, but also make a donation. We need more people like him who are given to the community, who are changing the lives of our young people with a positive message. Uh, and we need it now more than ever before because of critical race theory and some of the um, indoctrination that's taking place in our public and private schools, our children are being told negative messages about what you can't do. Uh, and he has a positive message. And not only that, there are lives that are already changed and we know, you know what people can do because they're actually doing it. So make sure that you visit that website. Hope to see you again soon.